Hey, hey, welcome to another issue of Doer TV with uh, the infamous <laughs> Ed Llewellyn, who is a master hypnotist, and he's going to be talking today uh, about the gastric band procedure from the mind side of things, neurogastric band procedure. And I, and I know that today, I think you're really going to enjoy the fact that we're going to be talking about willpower, hypothyroidism, weight control, and kind of the the things that you can do about that and how to utilize what um, uh, what the mind has to offer, if I can say it that way, to help you. Uh, Ed, thanks so much for being on the show. Pat, good afternoon. All is well in your world, I hope. Always good, always good. So let's get into a little bit of this. You know, we're in the third issue of this uh, uh, neurogastric band procedure, and uh, and I know that you know for anybody that's watched the other ones, this came out of the whole idea that most people, it seems to me, and maybe it's thirty percent of the people that get some sort of gastric band procedure, uh, lose weight and then gain it back, and. I know that that has to do with a person's self-perception and that your habits create the life you live. Well, here's a new way to, you know, address that with neurogastric band procedure. Wouldn't you wouldn't you agree, Ed? Absolutely. It's all everything starts in the mind. So what we think, how we behave, uh, all, you know, everything stems from the core beliefs that we have inside our mind. Very good. So uh, today's thing, you wanted to start off with willpower. What do you want to say about willpower and hypothyroidism? Well, two different subjects, of course, but uh, willpower, um, it's one of those things where if I say, don't notice that red elephant over there, all of a sudden, what do you have to do? Well, you have to think about a red elephant so that you don't notice it which seems kind of a, of a conflict, but in fact, that's how the mind works. So in order to not do something, you have to think about it. And of course, you know, you look at a lot of, of psychological marketing and, you know, different things that, that when people are trying to manipulate or influence uh, mass audiences, they use tricks like that. You know, they'll say something, in fact, uh, you know, let's take a, a court, for example. So, uh, if someone, uh, you know, they're making an argument in court uh, for someone to either go to jail or not go to jail, they'll say something knowing that the judge is going to say, well, strike that from the record. Well, that's great. You can strike it from the record. But you can't strike it from the people's minds. And they know that. That's a game that lawyers play. So the same thing happens with ourselves. When we use willpower, we say, I'm not going to eat that piece of chocolate cake. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. And yeah, I am. <laughs> because it's like we, 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 we didn't visualize it. Then we can just almost taste it in our mouth. We can smell that chocolate. And it just the more we we're trying to push it away, the more it comes towards us. Uh, in fact, there's, a, there's an expression I've used quite a number of times called what we resist persists. So we you know we, we keep thinking about it, trying to resist it, it is just going to persist. So willpower, uh, unlike what many people think, really doesn't work. Well excuse me just one second while I take a sip of my chocolate shake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's something about that. Uh, what you focus on determines your reality. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so one of the things that notes in, in my notes here that um, you talk a, about a neuropathological remodeling, and I don't know if that's a technical term or a or a medical term. If it is, then we'll just strike that from the record. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But it, 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 you talk about uh, hyper, hyper, hyperthyroidism, and I think isn't the thyroid kind of independent from the mind? Well, so that it, it, it's true. I mean, each part of our body is individual, but 
they all make up the whole. So it's you know it's synergism at it, it's probably at its highest level. So what happens is so much of the time when a person has a lot of mental stress, they have something dramatic or traumatic that happens in their life. Uh, what what happens in the mind is it, it does what's called conversion, and conversion is you know if you if you imagine a glass and that glass is sixty percent full, well then you're considered normal, sixty percent stress level, if you will, and as that uh, that level rises, especially with ongoing chronic stress, that glass just keeps getting more and more full. And at some point, you know, there's going to be that last drop that goes in and causes it to flow over. Well, that's what's called conversion. And the mind, since it can't hold anymore, has to convert that stress into a physical response. And so it could be diseases, it can be something as simple as a twitch of a finger, you know, something's happening in the mind that it can't hold any more stress, so it converts it into that physical response. Um, in fact, Pat, what, what that, uh, where I got a, a lot of that information is from my research on uh, investigative interrogation. Uh, you know, with that? Our, yeah, investigative interrogation. So, oh. so you know, like, the CIA, other government agencies, when they're interrogating people, they have techniques that raise their stress level, and they do that because they know once they got them, you know, at almost at the top of their glass, that then when they say something, boom, they're going to get a physical response. So it could be a twitch of an eye, it could be uh, finger moves. What they really love is when they have a person that's sitting in a chair that had that rocks and has wheels on it because within five seconds of saying a certain word or phrase, if the person has a reaction, then they know they're on the right track because the mind got stressed. It had to relieve that stress through the physical response. Well, the same thing happens uh, with our bodies on a day-to-day -day basis where we don't, we've got so much stress that we can handle, then it has to convert into physical response. So hyperthyroid is one of those responses that, that can happen. Now, again, my disclaimer, not a medical doctor, not diagnosing, <laughs> not, you know, no claims. Uh, please see your medical doctor if you have hyper, hyperthyroidism, uh, all those things. But uh, there are studies that have been done where hypnosis has successfully treated um, or, or at least relieved a lot of the symptoms uh, of people who have an have a overactive uh, thyroid. Interesting. I always think it's funny how much we have to disclaim stuff, but I totally get it. You know, you want to make sure that you do the, take care of yourself, do the right thing, see your doctor, whatever. Right. But the the um, so okay, so you, you've established that real quick, and then one of the things that I want to go in is, you know, everybody asks, well, why why can't I just use willpower? Well, again, you know, willpower, self control. Uh, all the same thing, you know, I'll get it a little technical terms here, I guess. Uh, one in particular is called ego depletion. Again, the mind, um, it, it, the mind is a really lazy organ, believe it or not. <laughs> it, it does everything it can to conserve energy. And so when it, um, when it feels that it is being when it's trying to use too much energy, more than more than what it feels it, it, it wants to, which is about twenty percent of our overall energy level, is what it uses. It finds ways uh, to to disperse that energy, uh, that that load. Or uh, again, with ego depletion, what happens is now it's been depleted. Now the the reservoirs of energy are are are, are way down on it. And now it's going to find the easiest thing to do, easiest direction to go in. And so, it, again, that's where self-control and willpower, after a certain length of time, it just diminishes and you end up eating more than what you would have in the first place had you just spaced it out. So it's a, you know, for some, there's going to be some people that argue that point. They're going to say, oh, well, I use willpower and I stopped smoking. I stopped 
uh, you know, eating too much. And I did this. I got a good friend. And I mean, she lost 79 pounds just because she thought it was just because of willpower. After talking with her a little bit, she had a lot of motivation behind that willpower. So there, there was much more than just, I'm just not going to eat these foods. It was, I'm not going to because, and so the mind had an association to go to. There was an end goal. I mean, her health was at risk. Um, she felt terrible, very lethargic. She had so many reasons why the willpower could work for her because there was something to come behind it and bolster it, not just you know straight out, I'm just not going to do this. Does that make sense? It does to me because I've said a long time ago that the um, you know you can't break change you love. So right. you've got to find you've got to find a fulcrum. You've got to find a a place where you can add where there's actual pressure and power and value in making that decision that changes your life. So if it's lose weight, get, you know, get more income, get better relationships, any of those things, you, you need to look at what are things that I can put in place that are going to be, in a sense, new habits uh, to, to move in that direction. The one thing that you offer, though, when you talk about you know, hypnosis and, and, and those areas, when, when somebody comes to you and they want to lose weight, what are some of the things that you'll do to try to help them break that love addiction of foods and, and eating? Well, this is going to sound really simple, uh, but as you and I both know, you know, we've been around the block a couple of times. Simple a lot of times is, is better. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with a person, now remember when they're in a state of, of, of hypnosis, uh, the, the suggestions that, that they're given uh, have much more impact than if you just stand there and talk with them. But here's here's what I do. I, I attack uh, weight gain from several different angles. But from the food angle, uh, what I suggest is is that, uh, and here's the exact phraseology: all those foods you used to love. I want you to have all those come up. I want you to remember each and every one. And as I sit there and watch them, you'll you'll see rapid eye movement going on underneath the eyelids. And they're bringing up all these foods, and, and you know the candies and the sugars and the the you know potatoes and the rice and all these things are coming up. And I said, you know, of course, this is all one continuous flow, and let all of them now disappear. They come up for the last time as you feel them now disappear, and they'll fade off into the sun. They'll fade off into white nothingness. And so when when the person comes up out of trance, I always test it out, see how they're doing, and so here's the usual response I get is, uh, I'll, I'll ask them the question, so tell me about the foods you used to love to eat that you knew were bad for you, and they'll start to list off, well, there was, you know, I love my chocolate, and I love this candy, and I love these potatoes, and, and all I can see now is lettuce and broccoli and protein so it's it's really interesting to watch not everyone does that but I, I recently I've had a few people that just you know midstream boom all of a sudden all those things just disappear they can't even think of them anymore and you know only the good things come to mind I get it I was sitting there I was thinking of playing with you going you snapped your fingers and I was like <laughs> 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 so all those people, you know, snap your fingers again, Ed, so that they can wake up again, right? That's right. On the count of five. At the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so one last thing, though, I really want to look at, at at how much stress affects eating before we get off the air today. Sure. Uh, it's probably the major contributor. So. What people, especially at least uh, you know here in the Western world, we what we've come to associate uh, with comfort is food. So we get stressed, we become anxious, we um, 
you know, something something goes on and is bothering us. And, and many times what we've learned to do is go, you know, reach for a bag of potato chips, go for a piece of candy, uh, different things. And, and what it all comes back to, Pat, is what I was talking about before, which is that ego depletion. Because what's happened is once stress is put on the body, it then is, is using up the energy resources, the, the glucose, and it's now searching for more energy. And so that's the reason why people reach for the carbohydrates, you know, all the sugars, you know, those kind of things, because the, the brain is, is it, it, it's lacking the glucose that it needs to continue to operate. So it's demanding that you do that. Now what's really cool is because hunger pains are a hallucination. I mean, you know, who who has consciously sat around and said, "Well, I think I'll make my stomach grumble now." Well, I haven't successfully done that yet. I, I have to admit, I. <laughs> so it's a it's an unconscious activity, and so what's what's really great again part of what the process is of helping people lose weight is is that they only have those when there's a true need for food. They, they no longer have those because of stress. Uh, the, the, again, you know, it's all how, the, how the, the mind's processing information, so it will no longer search for glucose when it doesn't need it. No, I get that. One of the things that I'm really... Um, I see what you do when you're hip, when you help somebody through uh, hypnosis is that it's a lot like rewiring a hard drive. Right. You, know, you get in there and you, you do your little thing on the kind of the inside of the head to make new connections where old ones existed and break down or diminish the power of previous connections that, that you know, were probably more like trenches in your mind before yep. because you, you, you created that habit, and now what you're doing is beginning to diminish those and create new pathways and new fissures and new connections where none existed. Is that what is is that a fairly accurate assessment? Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things I, I share with people is or ask them is, you know, how would you know just as you automatically right now reach for a, a, a chocolate bar when you get stressed. How would you like it that you just as automatically reach for, uh, you know, some uh, a protein, or you reach you you want to go exercise instead of reaching for the chocolate bar? You're going to do something else that was going to relieve that stress. That then again, the the brain would go, okay, the stress level's down. I don't need so much energy. I don't need all this glucose. Uh, you know, so that's what's really great is that, you know, when people say, well. Uh, I want to be. I, I don't. I don't want to be out of control. Well, right now they are. I mean, food is controlling. Smoking, alcohol, uh, drugs. Something is controlling them, and that's the reason why they don't have the life they want. And isn't it really cool when you can just automatically, just like they do right now for negative things, but automatically do the positive things? Very cool. Well, I know that, that one of the things that was really exciting when we first started this, you'd come up with a, uh, a program if somebody was looking at gastric bypass, uh, gastric, whatever they call it, you know, the lap band or whatever they call that, that right. stuff out there, and or maybe they'd had it and, and they wanted to reinforce it. It's a little bit like the, the cosmetic surgeon uh, that that has a client that they do amazing work on but the client doesn't see any change because they can't perceive themselves differently well right. they can't perceive themselves thin then all they see is a fat person is that correct absolutely so absolutely. so you're pat you're, you you have a program people can connect with you how well on, on the screen there is my email address edittranslink.com so they can connect with me there. They can reach me at 972-900-9207. Um, you know, so that's the, those are two ways they can connect with me. Uh, of course, they can go to my website, which you know, it's similar to my email address, the trans-think.com, and they can just send me uh, send me a message through there as well. Excellent. Well, I know I like to say the the idea behind this is to create really good 
uh, content that gives a couple of solutions, some ways to, to help people reach where they want to be weight-wise and without having to spend 25000 plus uh, to get some sort of lap band or whatever type of procedure. So again, get a hold of Ed. Your your way. To, the way to get a hold of you is the Ed at trans dash link. Yeah, tra trans dash link dot com. Mm -hmm. trans, trans dash think dot com, which is what's on the screen there. And right. with that, you know, anything else you want to say about uh, for, before we get off the air today? Well. You know, Pat, you and you and I both agree that we always want to give something of, of value to people when they when they watch these hangouts. You know, something they can just do themselves. So one of the things that that I'd like to leave with folks today is that whenever you get that urge to to want to eat something sweet when you normally you know when you normally get stressed and you go reach for the potato chips or whatever, take just a moment and create a space of time for you between. Uh, the, the, the cause and or the stimulus and the, and the reaction and stop yourself and you, you can even do something as like this just go stop because what that, that breaks the neural connection and then choose to either go exercise to relieve the stress or paint or whatever you do to relieve extra, relieve stress do something yourself that you can just relieve that stress and you'll notice that that what you thought was hunger pains were truly just false, uh, false signals, uh, you know, saying that you were hungry when you really weren't, and that in and of itself can can eliminate a lot of times per day that a person is going to eat the wrong foods. That's awesome. Good in, good information. Uh, again, this is Pat Dewar, Dewar TV uh, online uh, TV show that really is is trying to help people get what they want as quickly as they can. Thanks so much gang. Uh, it was great to see several viewers with us today and and um, you know catch us next time. Thanks.